Greetings gamers, it's Adam with the Rata Non Grata, and I was about to upload a video that I've been working on for a couple of weeks about the Jaguar graphics capabilities, so come back for that one. But we've got some Atari news to discuss here right now, as you can see on here, you might have already heard about, is Atari has announced the Atari 2600 Plus. And what it is, is new hardware that costs $129 and comes packaged with the enhanced CX40 joystick and a 10 games in one cartridge, which includes can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, Adventure, Combat, Dodge'em, Haunted House, Maze Craze, Missile Command, Real Sports, Volleyball, Surround, Video Pinball, and Yars Revenge. And so what this new console or re-release of a classic console does is it will play original Atari 2600 and 7800 cartridges on this. And it has an HDMI out. It looks like it has a little LED uh, light behind the Atari logo there, which some people told me was the reason to buy an Atari VCS. Um, and so uh, I guess that's a reason to buy this one too, right? Um, but yeah, it comes uh, like this is essentially the flashback, the evolution of the flashback. As I recall back in the day when the Flashback 2 and the Flashback 2 Plus came along, the motherboard had a space where you could solder on an Atari 2600 cartridge connector and play games through that, but obviously required a bit of hacking modification. I almost did it, but then I looked at the Atari 2600 Heavy Sixer that I have, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to destroy that, even though it wasn't in great condition to begin with. But uh, <laughs> uh, as I recall, the reason they didn't include the cartridge port on it at the time was concerns about people buying one at Walmart and then putting an old Atari 2600 cartridge in it, it doesn't work, and then calling a complaint into Atari. But I guess at this point they've decided that consumers are smart enough to understand that a 40 to 45 year old game cartridge might not work anymore, and so it's just use at your own risk sort of thing. But this does have HDMI out and widescreen support. It says the microprocessor is a rock chip 3128 SOC. I'm not sh familiar with that. I don't follow uh, SOC stuff really. But uh, the dimensions, it's almost 11 inches by 7 inches by almost 3 inches. And so sound, look, it's definitely a little bit smaller than an original Atari 2600. Maybe close to the Atari 2600 Junior. And they have an FAQ here. Will this play Atari cartridges? Of course. And cartridges from the XP program. And how is it different from the original 2600? We've enhanced it where it plays both 2600, 7800. In, in essence, it's really an Atari 7800 plus, um, but in an Atari 2600 uh, package. And HDMI, the widescreen mode, 80% of original size. Enlarged cartridge socket reduces sticking. Oh, that's good because there were some uh, third party companies like Tiger Vision where sometimes their cartridges just didn't, f well, they were a snug fit and <laughs> made it feel like you're going to bust your 2600, especially if you had a junior. Uh, and the Atari logo lights up when being played. And how's it different from the VCS? This plays the cartridges, the four switches, VCS is modern console, etc. And yes, it's smaller. And can I use the paddle, the CX40 and CX30 paddle controllers on original ones? Yes. And so it's all backwards compatible. And so as I noticed on the previous screen here, you can get a uh, CX30 paddle bundle where you get four games in one. I guess I'm a little surprised it's only four. I thought, I'm pretty sure there's more, but maybe that's all that Atari has <coughs> access to at this point. Um, so yeah, that would be $40 if that's what you're looking for. But if they're good and stable, like I, I still have some old paddle controllers, but usually when I've tried them, they're super, super jittery. And I think I replaced the potentiometer in them once and still was an issue. Um, but you can get Mr. Run and Jump 2600 for 30 bucks, or Berserk Enhanced Edition, which I must have missed this. Like I know the news that Atari purchased the IP to Berserk and um, 
but I hadn't heard of this enhanced one or if it's based on an existing um, hack but it comes with robot voice phrases intruder alert and others <laughs> as long as it has chicken fight like a robot then I'll be happy uh, robots fire diagonally for more challenging gameplay oh okay so that was in the Atari 5200 port but not on the 2600 new explosion animations minor bug fixes from the original hmm. interesting I mean I guess I would be almost tempted just to grab this just for my 2600 uh, and of course it has that old artwork, but this could be a great thing to include with your 2600 plus Before I go I should mention something that I thought about after words is that um, I guess one criticism I could have of this is that it's too bad that the 10 and 1 games cartridge Maybe does, doesn't include maybe 20 and like 10 of the others being Atari 7800 games. I mean, since it does support that, it would make sense for that to be offered. Or I guess if they had some kind of Atari 7800 XP thing going on, uh, I don't think anybody's done a port of Berserk to the 7800, but that would be nice as well maybe for an extra enhanced version or one that has a switch on it that could switch between 2600 and 7800 but yeah just that is something that would make this more attractive to me particularly for this included cartridges if it included 7800 games at least a couple uh, you know it could have asteroids and centipede and um I mean, Ninja Golf would be nice <laughs> as well, but uh, maybe they could do that as a separate 10 uh, 1 cartridge release or the Fabulous 11. There was the, when the 7800 came out, its launch lineup was called the Fabulous 11 because it was 11 titles. And so I, I don't know if they could still do that now without it being super expensive because of licensing because like, I think Galaga was one of those and Pole Position 2 was one of those as well. Um, but they could come up with. 11 games that Atari still owns from there, I would think, but just wanted to throw that in. Will I get one? Well, I've been pretty vocal online before about the Atari VCS. I mean, I haven't talked about it much uh, since I, I did one video about it and, of course, posts on Atari Age, but I've just kind of let it be whatever. Um, I, I was never one to be... I, I know some interpreted my posts as attacking them for liking the VCS, but what I was trying to express was this, I just didn't see the point. And so without some exclusive feature or games or something, uh, that it just didn't seem worth the price to me. And some of the arguments used to try and make it seem more valuable than it was just were absurd. Like, oh, it's the only console with a browser on it. It's like, who cares? Uh, you know, nobody really cares. There's browsers on everything with a display these days, and I don't need one on my Switch uh, to better enjoy my Nintendo Switch. Um, but had the VCS come with a cartridge port, so I could play my uh, Atari 2600 and 7800 games, of which I have somewhere over 200 2600 cartridges. I have almost a full collection of the Atari 7800 as well, uh, at least from the commercial release library. Um, I mean, that would have made it more tempting. As far as this, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, money's a little tight right now, so it's not something that I'm jumping on right away. But would I consider it yeah yeah i might end up pre-ordering it if the money situation improves here soon i mean it is a little bit pricey 129 bucks uh for that but i mean i have a 7800 and a 2600 junior and a 2600 heavy sixer and a flashback too uh, but none of them have hdmi i've thought about getting the i think it was the hyperkin 77 before uh, but I don't think that had 7800 support and so with the videos where I've captured Atari 7800 games I've had to use this uh, well I modified my 7800 with composite video out and so then I use a composite to HDMI converter and so that's not the best solution out there and so having something HDMI like this which is another argument that I guess was made for the Atari VCS is since it would have games from the 2600 and 7800 digitally that you could do uh, that you could go do them through HDMI and that's fine it's just when you already own all these games it's like I don't want to keep rebuying the same games over and over and over again and so uh, like even with Nintendo stuff I, I don't 
like doing that uh, where they keep re-releasing things and that's where the Nintendo Switch Online is fine with the NES um, packages where you can as long as you're paying for the Switch membership you get access to a bunch of NES games but anyways um, yeah what do you think what are you going to be jumping on this have you already pre-ordered or are you gonna wait and see um, yeah, what do you think about it? But overall, cool. I don't mind it. I'm not going to be critical of it like I am the VCS, just because, again, I can see where this would be useful. And since I have plenty of the games, it would just be more convenient to capture games using this than uh, the original uh, systems there. But that's it for now. We'll see you on the next video, which, again, will be Jaguar Atari Jaguar Graphics Showcase.